when we're talking about you know, how do you distinguish yourself from some of the great stuff being produced, the great whiskeys being produced in Kentucky and Tennessee, to really set the benchmark for what American whiskey is. You know, almost every industry has been transformed by science. Kentucky clearly has the name, and Tennessee clearly has, you know, they have a much better, bigger presence. But I like the, you know, Wild West frontier aspect of Texas being, you know, a new place for whiskey to be reimagined. An innovation around where your grains come from and where your yeast comes from, all of that can play a big role in, in crafting a true Texas whiskey versus just a whiskey made in Texas that's meant to be like a Kentucky bourbon or something or a Tennessee whiskey. You know, Texans have a lot of pride and um, to be able to say everything in the process is from Texas, I mean, there should be a lot of pride there, but I don't think the story has quite, quite uh, gotten out yet. My name is Rob Arnold, and I am the master distiller for TX Whiskey in Fort Worth. Our company started back in 2010 when Leonard Firestone and Troy Robertson founded um, TX Whiskey. We knew from the beginning that we were hoping to expand at some point, and so we decided to build a, um, one of the largest whiskey distilleries on a, on a former golf course. And we started making whiskey here 2018 and we call this distillery, which is still TX Whiskey, but we call this distillery the Whiskey Ranch Distillery. The craft whiskey movement started probably back in, uh, you know, 2005, 2006, and that was following on the heels of the craft beer movement, uh, microbreweries, so you had a lot of distilleries popping up around the country making one, two barrels a day maybe, and that was us when we started as well. We now are producing about 40 to 45 barrels a batch with up to three batches a day max capacity. And so that puts us up there with some of the largest distilleries in the country, including Kentucky. What we can do here and what I think is happening in our industry in general is how do we distinguish ourselves from some of that great whiskey that is being produced in Kentucky and Tennessee and what makes it Texas? What makes it a Texas bourbon? Like, why is it actually different? You know, if we are using a lot of the same equipment as the guys in Kentucky, which we are, how can we then innovate and change the flavors of our whiskeys in a way that is distinct? Well, your three ingredients for whiskey are gonna be grain, yeast, um, water as well, and then the oak barrel. And so how can we actually innovate within those ingredients um, to create distinct Texas whiskeys? After joining the company in 2011 and, and really learning on the job how to become a, a whiskey distiller for, you know, for four or five years, I decided I also wanted to find a way back into the research, into science. And that's how I hooked up with Texas A&M. Texas A&M offers a distance PhD in plant breeding and Distance means that you're able to stay where you are, maintain your full-time job, and complete your research remotely and your coursework online. So it was perfect, and it also happened to be that I was able to find an advisor and, and Seth who didn't just study corn, which is the, raw, the main ingredient we use to make bourbon, but also had a passion for, for brewing and distilling. I got an email from our uh, director of graduate studies saying, hey, there's this crazy kid who, you know, he's got a microbiology degree and he somehow wants to do plant breeding for whiskey. And I had incidentally, a few years beforehand, been actually reaching out to distillers and saying, hey, we have all these varieties. Does somebody want to look at these for whiskey making ability? And I almost got, never got a response. And if I cold called people enough, uh, they would just flat out turn me down. And so I jumped at the chance uh, to work with Rob. My name is Seth Murray. I'm a professor in the Department of Soil and Crop Science, Texas AgriLife Research, Texas A&M University. I do uh, applied corn breeding for uh, the state of Texas, for Texas farmers. I do a lot of basic research, uh, a lot of graduate student training, and then some long-term big picture research like developing perennial corn. Seth took me on and, it's, and we've been able to really explore how corn variety and where the corn is grown impacts the flavor of whiskey. 
No one would debate that a, a wine from Bordeaux tastes the way it does to some extent because of where those grapes were grown um, in, in Bordeaux. And the same way with Napa Valley wine. You know, you can't reproduce what happens in, in a glass of Napa Valley wine uh, if the grapes didn't come from there. That is something that through working with Texas A&M, we've been able to explore and, and provide a real scientific framework around um, this idea that, yeah, it does matter what variety of corn you use. And that's something that wouldn't have been possible without working with a university and with scientists who you know, were willing to kind of go down that road with us. What I really liked about what Rob wanted to do was he didn't want to breed a new corn necessarily. Um, he wanted to use his skills to work with a breeder to identify through the breeding process uh, corn that would be useful for, for his purposes. Whiskey making in general, I've always seen it as you have uh, two different two different pipelines that kind of meet eventually so that you can actually create something that tastes good and you have the artistic side and you have the science side and you I think you really need to have both to do this to do this craft correctly. If you combine the two, um, that's when you can really create something special, I think. Collaborations allow us to tackle these big big projects that we couldn't do on our own. We could never have accomplished these plant breeding pursuits with, without working um, with Texas A&M and with Seth. And it's, it's paid off in lots of ways because it's not just the science that we're, we're gaining, it's not just the proprietary corn varieties or, or flavors that we're gonna, we're gonna yield. It's also you know, the staff, the people that we've been able to bring on. We've hired two Texas A&M graduates um, directly through my relationship with Seth, we met our master blender. My name is Ali Ochoa and I'm the master blender at TX. But the biggest part of blending is that we have to smell a nose through all of our samples. Your nose is your biggest tool in this industry. So you go, you evaluate each barrel, kind of see what they're smelling like, how they'll um, act together as a whole. Then you start uh, mixing or blending batches. So combining different barrels to get the best flavor profile product that you can. What I'm doing now is my dream job and the reason I got into doing this job is because I was at a coffee conference with Dr. Murray and uh, an outside party asked me what I wanted to do and I said really love to work with whiskey and Dr. Murray said I have a student that's getting uh, his PhD and he's also a master distiller. I can put you two in contact. You know, the science side is massively important, but so is the ability to tap into high, you know, high quality, talented students that we can then hire to work here. So it's really an industry academia partnership, leveraging what we're already doing. Ideally, the, the hybrids um, that we've bred and that Rob has selected and identified as exciting will be what TX whiskey is made from in the next few years. Um, and to me, that's really exciting being able to see, you know, an Aggie variety that was designed for farmers, all of a sudden every consumer can enjoy in a bottle of whiskey.